guys, and welcome back to my YouTube. It's Andrea. Uh, first of all, to remind you that our Go Get Funding campaign is in full swing. Links in the description of this video, so do check it out. I'll be very grateful for any help you can offer. Second of all, uh, to tell a little bit about more about the story and what you can expect, expect from it. Um, starting with how Vampire Society is built, imagined, works, I guess. Uh, so, mostly in, not mostly, only in City of Red Throne is there a full city of vampires. Uh, what was once a fragmented story in the old world, or the map I showed you, uh, is all brought together in City of Red Throne. And that means that there, be, there will be a whole bunch of bloodlines, uh, houses, names, uh, legends, myths, uh, ruling structures, power struggle, struggles, uh, political intrigue, political games, uh, and just the, there's a whole way uh, that, in my mind, a vampire is concerning its kind, its own worst enemy. Uh, because they're so used to having so much power over humans in the old world, that now when placed in a city where there are no humans, everyone is equal, they do have to fight for their power to keep it and to keep their status. It is a highly uh, caste-built system, meaning that two castes, highborn or lowborn, uh, do tend to clash a lot, with lowborn trying to climb up the stairs and highborn trying to keep it. Uh, as seen through the story of Nemesis mostly, uh, even being born as a highborn does not, does not give you the I would say cer certainty or security that you will be so for the rest of your life. Uh, higher you go, higher you're born, higher the house uh, you are born into, uh, you do meet and have to fight a lot stronger enemies who have been playing this political game for a oh, solid amount of time. Uh, they are evil, they are cruel, they will play all kinds of games uh, without some human highborn social games or uh, as we usually see the noble houses playing by some certain rules or some certain things and just uh, there is no moral, et moral etiquette is different. Uh, they will not refrain from killing, uh, openly or by hiring assassins. They will not uh, refrain from uh, essentially torturing other members of Empire Society because it is a way to which many houses or bloodlines show de their power. Another thing that is, well, essential in writing Vampire Society, uh, I got this as a gift uh, yesterday, so edgy things, <laughs> just a whole bunch of things for that, is the masquerade. The masquerade is essentially a foundation through which uh, vampire society shows its power. Through uh, masks they wear at the masquerade, or uh, I would say dresses and outfits and lavish uh, jewelry and everything they brought back from the old world that survived the founding of the city. Much of it is lost. The reason for that is because Red Throne has, has its own way uh, and specific way it came to be. So uh, in order to be a highborn and keep your highborn status, you are required to follow some social norms. However, uh, in case of Nemesis here, she is, uh, well, that's one of her biggest flaws, actually. I kept it as the biggest flaw. She is an outcast of her own society. She doesn't get well with, she doesn't understand much of the workings of the political games. Uh, she's a fierce fighter. She can kill whomever she wants, essentially essentially. However, uh, many of her enemies in Red Throne are 
very and highly protected by their own status and power of their bloodlines. So she cannot, she can't move openly against them. Uh, she is born a princess, however, uh, there's also a twist to that, so you'll see that in a book. I won't go too much into it. Uh, she has, that's one of her main things she needs to learn. She needs to learn to be a part of a vampire society, essentially, with, um, well, learning to be a political player. And it's something she lacks highly, because she's a fighter. In my society, vampire society, when talking about it, uh, there are political vampires and fighter vampires. Uh, a vampire as a vampire has its own fighting style. They do have their own strengths. But set in an island of Red Throne, not the island, the city of Red Throne, uh, the island is so much more. Uh, topic again for another video. Uh, set in Red Throne, they are equal. Thus, when writing Red Throne political societies and political v rules, I had to keep that in mind that uh, I cannot look at it as simple overpowered character over human characters. They are equal, defined by their own flaws and things they perhaps lack. Nemesis Nemes lacks uh, her political game smarts. She's not stupid, she's extremely smart, however, she's just unaware and is not used to the whole uh, political games, I guess. Uh, she has profound hatred for, well, the masquerade, uh, due to the fact that uh, she despises masks. And in uh, Red Throne, they are kind of crucial. To attending a masquerade, you have to have you have to wear a certain dress. A certain dress code is acquired. She hates dresses. She's a fighter in born and raised, forged in fire of training since she was six. Uh, so yeah, that, that's gonna be one of her biggest challenges to face. To really be faced to a society full of her equals. It's one thing to show power to humans in the old world. That really comes naturally. To show power to her own kind and stand up and be as politically smart as some vampires who have been playing this game for a while is going to be a challenge. So there's always that challenge to do. Uh, just to let you know a little bit of what to expect. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to just cut it here because otherwise I'm going to start talking a whole bunch of things. Anyway. Do try to, not don't try, actually go. To click the link in the, description, in the description of this video and check out our Go Get funding. Donate, follow, subscribe, uh, share, uh, and uh, stay in touch. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you here again really soon. Today is a recording day. <laughs> See you around, guys.